Hey guys, what is going on? It is I, Apple Geek 3 and in this video, I want to present to you guys a list of what I think are the best tweaks of Fall 2016. These are all compatible on iOS 9.3.3. And of course, as always, some of these tweaks are purely functional and others are purely aesthetic, so I think you're going to like this list. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Alright, the first tweak I have on my list is a tweak called Minimalistic UI. What this is going to do is allow you to configure what your UI looks like. If you don't know, UI means user interface. So with this tweak, you can customize what your user interface looks like by removing lines, blurs, and all that good stuff. Here inside of the settings panel for this tweak, you can customize what you want to see or want to get rid of actually. By toggling these on and off, you can get rid of the bars, you can get rid of transparencies. And here inside of Safari, we can see that the search bar is like very flat, it looks clean. There are some bugs with this tweak as of now, but hopefully this will be fixed in the future. Have you ever wondered if there was a way to get rid of the ugly iOS pop-ups that are built into iOS 9. Well, Sleek Sheets gets rid of that and instead makes these pop-up sheets much more flat, much more elegant, and you can have the option to toggle off the cancel button, round the edges, make it float. You can do all sorts of things inside of the settings and when compared to iOS 10, it looks so much cleaner. This is such an awesome tweak, so go check it out. Next up, we have Springy. This allows you to customize your respring screen. So as you guys can see there, I changed mine to a teal on black startup screen and inside of the Springy settings, you get to customize animations. You can download them from Cydia. You can customize your own color, your Apple logo color. Again, Springy allows you to change your respring screen. Next up, we have card date. This is a very simple tweak that puts the current date in your status bar in place of your carrier. So if you're one of those people who always don't know what day it is, this is the perfect tweak for you. Inside of the card date settings, you can format how this date shows up in your status bar. And there's a whole website explaining how to format this date. You can type MMM for month or DD for days and YY for year. In other words, the more letters of the same letter you put in a certain category will determine how much information of that category it shows in that status bar. Now, if you're like me and you are picnicky about your volume bar, this next week is perfect for you because I always find myself trying to find the perfect medium between two volume settings and the volume buttons just don't do it justice. They're not accurate enough. By default, they can control 16 steps. And here in the settings, I'm going to double that number to 32. So basically, every time I press the volume button, either up or down, is going to go up or down only half a step. And for every two presses, it will only go up one step, which gives me a lot more control over how much sound is coming from my device. Small volume step, you've got to try this one out. Next up, we have a time saver. This is called prediction shortcuts. It puts shortcut actions inside of your predictive text area. That way you can copy, paste, select all right from the prediction menu. So if you don't use the predictive text thingy, this is probably going to be very useful because now you can cut, paste, select with this tool. Really handy little tweak. Next up, we have shutter sound switch. Basically, this allows you to turn off the annoying camera shutter sound when you're taking a picture or taking a screenshot. This is especially helpful if you have sleeping family members in the room and you don't want to wake them. Also, as a little bonus feature, when you take a screenshot, you have the option to toggle off the flash. Also, you get a little menu, like you can save it to your photo album or share it with a friend before you even save it to your camera roll. That way you don't have to go back and delete it later. If we quickly look at the settings panel, we can see that there's much to customize. You can toggle the flash, like I said, and enable or disable that menu. This is quite an extensive tweak, and I do recommend you guys to go check this one out. 
Next up we have sticky caps. It basically fixes that annoying caps lock button that always uncaps itself, you know, when you switch keyboards, like when you go to your number pad or when you go to an emoji selector, it would always uncap itself. So sticky caps basically makes a persistent caps lock button. That way the caps lock will stay on even when you switch keyboards, much like on a traditional computer. You can see on iOS 10, it doesn't do that. As you guys may have noticed throughout the video that when I'm opening and closing applications, there's like this little bouncy animation instead of the normal floating one. This is due to Sleek and Bouncy 9. It's going to basically speed up your animations and add some trajectory to it. That way they actually bounce, there's like a 3D effect, and to me this looks awesome. Now if you don't really like this specific animation or you don't like the speed of this animation, Hortus can speed it up for you. Hortus basically does the exact same thing as Sleek and Bouncy 9, except for the fact you can customize every aspect. You can customize how fast it's going, how much bounce there is, etc. Also, Hortus does apply to more areas of iOS. As you see here on the lock screen, that login was super fast. And instead of applications, when you scroll back and forth, it's going to have that extra bounce to it. There is so much customization in this tweak that I can play with this all day. Now for the bonus tweaks. Have you ever tried to select something in iOS but it just wouldn't select like it was being stubborn? Well better text selection fixes that. It basically makes the text selection in any app work as you expect it to instead of jumping around as it always does on iOS and it just freaks me out when it does that. It's really annoying. So this tweak basically fixes the broken text selection in iOS. If you're an avid jailbreaker like myself, you would have noticed that every time you respring, Touch ID fails to log in. Like it just it just doesn't want to work. Touch ID respring fix will fix that. Hence the name. So go check it out. And last but not least, we have send percentage. This basically adds a send percentage to your iMessage app when you're sending something like a photo or video or if you're on a slow internet connection. This is super helpful. All right, you guys, that is all I've got for you in this video. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed. And of course, I'll be posting iOS 10 jailbreak content when that comes out. So don't forget to subscribe for that. Anyways, guys, until next time, peace.